Welcome to the Travel Guide of Oslo. In a country as obscenely beautiful as Norway, you might expect the capital to be a knockout, and you'd be right. This is a city caught between land and sea, reaching out to touch its namesake fjord and bordered by wooded hills that ripple north to eventually become cloud-tickling mountains. Oslo is defined by its theatrical geography, light and the whims of the Nordic weather. From the never-dying days of midsummer to the snows of winter. Culturally, Oslo never misses a beat, with museums and galleries winging you from Viking ships to avant-garde art, faded concert halls, and chandelier-lit cafes where you can hang out with the moody ghosts of expressionist painter Edvard Munch and modernist playwright Henrik Ibsen. There's also a chance to flirt with the past when sauntering along Carl Johann's gate to the riotously neoclassical royal palace. But the city's cultural scene is not limited to glass cabinets and 19th-century splendor. Oslo's spark, verve and desire to innovate are evident in born-again Dorvika. Full of newfound cool, this revamped port district wows with the Munch Museum, architecturally striking Dijkman Library, and an opera house designed to resemble a floating glacier. And, this being Oslo, these new landmarks are all ultra-low energy, fitting in neatly with the country's clean, green, future-focused ethos. Keep walking straight along the promenade, heading towards the harbor. While you walk, have a look to your left at the awe-inspiring building that slopes down to the waters of the Oslo Fjord. That's the National Opera and Ballet of Norway. The idea of getting an opera house in Oslo was already around in 1917, but it wasn't as easy as many thought. The building you see today opened in 2008, so it took almost 100 years to get from idea to reality. But the building is certainly worth the wait. Already one year after the opening, more than 13 million visitors had been at the opera, and today it's one of the most visited tourist attractions in Norway. This new building in the very epicenter of the capital of Norway feels like the complete opposite of the usual, please don't touch culture tourists are often met with worldwide. The subtle variations in the structure of the marble embellished roof is signed by Norwegian artists Christian Blistad, Cal Grud, and Jorun Sands, and is truly a beautiful surface meant to be stepped on. Please keep in mind that under your feet there are three highly differently designed scenes, a myriad of public rooms and halls to explore, and a vibrant workplace for more than 600 opera and ballet professionals. The Opera House box office is open on Saturday, 11 a.m. till 6 p.m. and Sunday, 12 p.m. till 6 p.m. Entrance fee for adults is 100 kroners, for children 4 to 16 years old 60 kroners, and for students with valid ID it is 60 kroners. Akershus Castle is a historic site in Oslo, Norway's capital city. It is a famous leisure location in the city because of its gorgeous green surroundings. For seven centuries, the castle has been at the heart of the country's progress and expansion, and now it is a major cultural venue. King Haakon V constructed the Akershus Fortress to defend against Norwegian nobility invasions. The fortress's geographic position near the sea added to its worth, and it has withstood repeated invasions while never being conquered in war. The Norway Resistance Museum is devoted to the nation's World War II historical identity. The museum showcases artifacts ranging from authentic goods and records to banners, documentaries, and pictures from the era of colonization around late 1930 and 1945. The Resistance Museum is housed in a 17th-century structure next to a commemoration of Norwegian nationalists killed during wartime. Located at Radhusgatan 7B, 151 Oslo, Norway, the nearest tram station to Fortress Contrast Jarrett Tram Station, 0.3 miles away. It is a seven-minute walk to the fortress. Nearest bus station, Kvadratjørn bus stop is 0.5 miles far. It is a nine-minute walk to the destination. The entrance fee for adults is 100 kroners, for children 40 kroners, family ticket costs 250 kroners, and for students it is 60 kroners. Home to the most expensive real estate in the entire country, as well as a Mifflin star, Frogner has earned its reputation as the epicenter for Oslo's affluent West End. Just a short walk or tram ride away from the most central parts of Oslo, this borough stretches from the Royal Palace up through the magnificent Frogner Park. Take a walk in the park, have a great dining experience or admire 19th century buildings. The largest park in central parts of Oslo and a popular recreational area for people from all over the city. 
Inside the park, you find Vivlin Sculpture Park, one of Oslo's most popular attractions. On a nice day, the park is full of people. Here you can go for a run, walk the dog, have a picnic or barbecue, play badminton or just enjoy the sun. Frognir Park has Norway's biggest collection of roses, a total of 14,000 plants of 150 different species. Frogner Stadium and Frogner Bed at Open Air Pool are located in the corner of the park that faces Majorstua. In the corner near Frogner Plass, you can visit Frogner Manor House and the Museum of Oslo. The park has a cafe and a restaurant and children can play on Norway's biggest playground, located near the main entrance. Entrance to the park is free and it is open all through the year. The Oslo City Hall is full of great art, magnificent murals, tons of symbolism, and the entrance is free. We highly recommend a visit when you travel to Oslo. Unless there is some special event going on, the City Hall is usually open every day from 9 a.m. till 4 p.m., later in summer. To best experience the Oslo City Hall, we recommend a guided tour. With all its symbolism and history, it could be a good idea to take advantage of an expert to guide you around. In the 1920s, Functionalism was the leading architectural style in Norway, and, as a result of this the new Oslo City Hall became a building strongly inspired by this architectural form, with a clean surface, but you also find elements of modernism, art deco, and new classicism. King Haakon put down the ground stone in 1931, but the actual construction did not start until the year 1933. Due to a pause in the construction during World War II, 1940-45, the City Hall had its inauguration on the 15th of May 1950. This date also happens to be religious feast day for St. Halvard, patron saint of Oslo. You find two towers in the Oslo City Hall, which are 66 and 63 meters, 216 and 206 feet high. The East Tower has a Carillon set of 49 bells, the highest number in any Nordic country. Arnberg and Poulsen, the architects of the City Hall, invited leading Norwegian artists to contribute with their art. As a result we have today a rich art collection showing off Norwegian cultural heritage and crafts. The artists introduced many symbols or hidden messages to future visitors. And, best of all, it's all available to the public. Every year over 300,000 guests visit the Oslo City Hall, famous for its history, architecture, and art collection. The City Hall is the city's administrative body and the seat of the city council. In the center of Oslo stretches the main street Carl Johans Gate. The main and boulevard is one of the attractions of the city. Here stroll and stroll locals as well as tourists. Along the street are numerous shops, shopping malls, hotels, bars, restaurants and cafes in historic buildings, so that there is always a lot of activity. Today, the Carl Johans Gate is Oslo's strolling mile no. One, named after the Swedish-Norwegian king Carl Iua Johan. The gorgeous street extends from Oslo's main station up to the royal castle. If you walk along the street, you are basically walking straight towards the castle, as the street was once designed to focus on the castle. The long boulevard is divided into two sections. While the part from the station square up to the Edretorg was once inside the city walls, in the 1830 A's, due to the royal castle, a paradise street was arranged by the architect H. D. Linstow. This was given the name Slotsvej, Castle Road, while the older part of today's Carl Johans Gate was named Ostergade. The Royal Palace in Oslo is usually open to the public every year from late June until the middle of August. The guided tour takes visitors through some of the most important and lovely rooms in the palace. They visit the council chamber where His Majesty presides over the Council of State on Fridays, and the banqueting hall where more than 200 people can dine during a gala dinner. The tour also includes the most beautiful guest room in the palace, the King Haakon Seven Suite. Every year a new exhibition is mounted as part of the tour. The Royal Palace is open to the public during the summer. All visitors must follow a guided tour. Entrance by Slots Garden on the west side, the back of the Royal Palace. Each tour lasts for approximately one hour. The guided tour takes visitors through some of the most beautiful state rooms in the Royal Palace. Cabinet Cloakroom, Cabinet Parlor, Council Chamber, White Parlor, King Hawken Seven Suite, Upper Vestibule, Bird Room, Mirror Hall, Family Dining Room, Small Ceremonial Hall, Great Hall, and the Banqueting Hall. Entrance fee for adults and students is 145 kroners, 
for children aged 3 years and above it is 125 kroners. Oslo is where you will find Oslo Fjord, a stunning waterway in southeast Norway, home to several stunning fjord islands. And what might interest you is that you can reach the islands of Norway's inner Oslo Fjord on a short trip. Yes, that's right, a significant European capital has stored islands that can be reached in under 10 minutes by ferry which costs 30 kroners to 50 kroners. Conveniently, Hovudoya, the nearest island to the city center, is also the most interesting and probably the prettiest, it's rocky, rolling hills decorated with woods and pastures. There are several specific attractions too, beginning with the Kunstverket, a little art gallery housed in an old building just up from the jetty where there are displays of contemporary art. There are also the substantial ruins of a Cistercian monastery, built by English monks in the 12th century, and incidental military remains, reminders of the time when the island was garrisoned and armed to protect Oslo's harbor. Hedel Stave Church is arguably one of the most beautiful stave churches in Norway, and it's no wonder that this wooden church attracts thousands of tourists every single year. Experience Norway's largest stave church, a wooden cathedral from the 13th century, still in use as the parish church. Both the exterior and the interior invites you on a time travel back to the fascinating world of the Middle Ages. Hedel Stave Church is 24 meters long, 17 meters wide, and 29 meters tall, with three tall turrets. The building material is ore pine. Around the whole building, you can find an exterior gallery, Salgang, with four entrance portals. The carved ornaments surrounding the doors are lush and mysterious. Inside the church, there are traces from 800 years with different periods in the church life. Several pieces of furniture from the Middle Ages have recently been made available for the public. Their motives constitute a compelling testimony of Norse faith and myth. Just ride a bus or the train to Notodden, then change to a local bus to Heddle Stave Church from there. Bus lines 4, 305 and 301 all go between Notodden and the Stave Church. Its entrance fee is 90 kroners for adults, 30 kroners for children and 60 kroners for students. Opening hours are variable, so check with local guide for the details. One of the most important buildings in Oslo is the stately Storting at Parliament House of Norway. Located on Oslo's Grand Boulevard Karl Johans Gate 22, which leads up to the Royal Palace. From the windows of the rotunda, the view extends directly to the Royal Palace and the National Theatre. Directly in front of the Parliament, on either side of the entrance area, are two oversized, fabulously designed granite lions, to which the Parliament also owes the name Lion's Hill. Directly in front of the Parliament building is the much-visited Idzal Park, a picturesque green area that forms a charming setting for the unique storting at any time of the year. Oslo's magnificent parliament building can be visited during an official, free-guided tour in spring, summer, and autumn. Oslo's National Theatre was inaugurated in 1899. The main building is centrally located between the Royal Palace, Oslo, and the Parliament of Norway. The building is designed by architect Henrik Boll and has served Norway's main arena for stage artists, theatre productions, and large celebrations for over 100 years. Statues of the great Norwegian writers Henrik Ibsen and Dornstjern Dornsen guard the theater's main entrance. They also have their names engraved on the theater's facade, along with the Dano-Norwegian playwright Ludwig Holberg. The theater building has been remodeled several times, and today the National Theater houses four different stages, Hovedsenen, Malerselen, Proselen Ogbaksenen. The oslo Bergen Railway travels between the two destinations several times a day. It takes six and a half hours to complete the 267-mile journey. It also makes 21 stops along the way, so that travelers can hop on and off as they make their way across the nation. Though really, the journey is the destination as the train travels across mountains and valleys, next to lakes and fjords, and even rides above the treetops. Those traveling from Oslo to Bergen on the train can hop aboard six daily departures. The train schedule can vary depending on the time of year you travel. Those traveling on the reverse route, from Bergen to Oslo, can take one of three departures. No matter which time of day guests choose to ride, or which direction they are traveling, they can pick from either economy class or business class. Economy class includes a seat with either a fixed or folding table, luggage racks, Wi-Fi, and power outlets. 
Food and drink are also available for purchase. Business class offers travelers wider seats with more legroom, a coffee and tea service, complimentary newspapers, and Wi-Fi. There's even a family coach for those traveling with children, which comes with play areas and toys to keep little ones busy as parents enjoy the view outside. Travelers can purchase tickets on the website and either print them out to show the conductor or simply show the barcode to the conductor on their phone prior to boarding. The train makes 21 stops in villages and towns sprinkled across the route, including in some of Norway's most idyllic ski destinations like Mjolfjell. Travelers can get off and check in to the Mjolfjell Mountain Lodge, which serves as the perfect home base for backcountry ski adventures in the winter or the ideal place to rest after a summer hiking trip. Jovholmen is a neighborhood in the borough Majorstuen in Oslo, Norway. It is located on a peninsula sticking out from Akerbrig into the Oslof Jord. It is located east of Philipstad and south of Vika. At the tip of the peninsula, next to the sculpture park, is an outdoor bathing area. The water leads out to the inner Oslof Jord. The area was bought by the shipyard Akers Mechanisk Verkstad in the mid 19th century, who planned to build a dry dock there. Instead, it was bought by the municipality in 1914 and transferred to the Port Authority in 1919. They built docks and artificial land, increasing the area from 5 to 33 hectares. From the 1960s, Fred, Olsen & Co. rented the docks and from 1971 Nillens Mechanisk Verkstad had a shipyard on the spot. Since 1982, the area has been used for office space, terminals, and warehouses. The Norwegian National Academy of Ballet was located there. Since 2005, the area has been sold to private developers who are conducting an urban renewal with housing. The area has about 1,200 apartments since 2012. It is part of the Fjord City Urban Renewal Program. The barcode architecture concept was developed by the Norwegian firms Dark and Alab in collaboration with the Dutch agency MVRDV. The barcode concept is designed as a geometric system that stands out architecturally. The concept incorporates values such as openness to the fjord, admittance of light and airiness. Based on the barcode concept, the 12 buildings are designed by different architectural firms. Besides the overall shape, the buildings are very different. Each building has its own distinctive character and enjoyable architectonic details and quirks make barcode an architectural experience quite out of the ordinary. List of stops closest to barcode includes Oslo Bus Terminal, Middle Alder Parken, Jern Banderged, Oslo S, Dorvika, Groland, and can be reached by Bus 160, 250, 300, 380, 400, 505, 81, VY1, Train L1, R13, RE10, Subway 15, Light Rail 19. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share our videos.